Welcome to episode 9 of the Movie Lighthouse, shining a light through the fog of film. I'm James. I'm Laurie. And I'm Wyndham. And how are we this bright, sunny Sunday morning? I'm, I'm, I'm well. I'm <laughs> trying to, what am I trying to channel here? My ball's dropping. Coming of age. I'm, I'm <laughs> well. <laughs> oh yes, our coming of age spectacular. Yeah. But in answer to your question, I'm well, thank you mate. Great. Sun's out. Beautiful day. It's not bad, is it? It's been a very good summer so far. Good stuff. Yes. I'm pleased to hear it. And it's supposed to continue for a few more days. Yeah, we're in the middle of a heat wave. Yeah. Been watching a football? No. I have, I've, I've been dipping in. I and it's, it's nice to see, well, it's basically we've now got a team that we can kind of, not necessarily believe in that we'll win, but, <laughs> a, you know, a team to be proud of, I feel. Do you? Yeah. Don't don't you? Which team is that? In England. All right. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. yeah. I'm very multicultural. It's interesting. Any. Lots of the, uh, I guess, pre-tournament established names are now out. Countries are out. Argentina, Germany. Yeah, yeah. This could Portugal's be Portugal's gone home. Yeah, but yeah, there you I don't go. think we really care. Can we add? Do you think we can add sport and football to our keywords now? Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> <Try> to <laughs> reach a wider group. audience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, we haven't got any mail this month. I'm afraid. Are we not. Uh, Nothing. Well, it is summer. People are. It is. Yeah. You know, people have got to cut them some slack. Yeah. But um, so, shall we kick straight on with the news? Yeah. Go on. All right. I can't. I can't remember. Do we have a Do we have a news jingle? Yeah, no, we don't. No. I might. Has anyone got an old typewriter? I might put an old typewriter sound in right now. Nice. There we go. All right. Well, um, I've got a bit of news. Rosemary's baby's fifty years old. Is Ooh, it? Crikey. It's no longer a baby, then, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a middle-aged yeah. man, I suppose. Devil man. Devil man. Yeah. Spoiler. I is wonder it... what he's doing. I hope that comes up at some point. Is he president that's enough... of the United States? <laughs> <laughs> Can he? Something like that. That's another film I haven't seen. You're kidding. No, I, I really don't. I haven't seen very many of these classics. Jesus, so, you, so you're talking about Omen 3? What? Was that Omen 3? Oh, no. Rose with Baby. Oh, right. Oh, okay. I've seen Omen 3. Yeah. He, was, he, was he the president of America? Omen 3, was he? No, he was yeah. a senator. No, but he was building towards yeah, being was. president. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Which was Rose like, baby. Was <laughs> Holy yeah. shizzle, you need to see that. Well, I'm hoping over the 10 years that we do this <laughs> podcast, eventually it will come up. It's, yeah, it's a biggie. It, yeah. It's a real, real biggie. We're all good we didn't cover that one. Yep. Anyone else got the news? Uh, so, a couple of just uh, trailers that have come out for films that I particularly want to see. Mm. And I don't know necessarily whether they fit our remit completely, but who cares? Equaliser 2 is coming out. Huh? See, did you see the first one with Denzel Washington? No, it was it good? I love it. It's just one of those John Wick style action rampage where Denzel Washington is amazing and hard as nails. Okay. Sequel's coming out. Love it. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah you're going to have to tell us about that one. Yeah, I can't imagine it's going to be a school trip for us. But yeah, <laughs> very excited about it. And Sicario 2, Soldado. Do you see Sicario? No. Again, this is supposed to be great as it's, well. It it's is completely a great not film. Absolutely great film. Uh, and the sequel looks pretty bloody good. I think it's out already. Yeah, I've certainly seen the trailer US a couple is, of times. I think um, it's coming coming over here, so that should be a, maybe not a school trip, but I will keep you updated as to how that yeah, goes. Yeah, okay. It, it do you like well. action films, Wendy Bum? I, I do sometimes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then. Good. It's our action aficionado. Yeah. So um, at the end of the podcast, we're going to do a little review on Solo. Oh, great, um, okay. But it's going to be full of spoilers. So I thought, because I thought, you know, it's been out long enough now, so I thought we'd do it at the end. Yeah. Because okay. you haven't seen it, have you, Wyndham? No. Um, that way we can talk about all the things that, we're, you know... Spoil the shit out Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. Excellent. All right, um, I went to see Jurassic World. Oh, oh right. Right. Yeah, it was terrible. I know, I heard it was supposed to be all right. I mean, I know the, the, the first one that they did was looked... I haven't seen it to be fair, but it looked proper pants. But then I saw the trailer for this one when we were in Solo, and I thought, actually, this this could be quite interesting. Dinosaurs in a stately home. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> quite that's quite interesting. <laughs> Stupid. And was it a National Trust? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, without giving anything away, I've got I've got two main problems with it really. One is. Right, you've got all the dinosaurs that ever existed, yeah, or whatever. They brought loads of them back, and then but so. they're not content with it, so they have to make super dinosaurs. Yeah, you know, that's just As a reflection would. on society. Well, it's a bad reflection, and society's bad. I, yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, and also, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Pratt. Pratt. 
No. The guy who, Goldblum. The guy who goes on about the plastic all the time, David his brother, Richard Attenborough. Yeah. Dicky. Yeah, because he's dead. He is dead. They just get a replacement Richard Attenborough in it, which is a farmer from Babe. You know, oh, oh really? Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's, not playing, he's not playing the same character, but he might as well be. He's got a cane with an amber bit at the top. Right. And, you know, he's a sympathetic guy and all that They didn't CGI thing. him back in then? <laughs> no, they'd have been better off doing See, that. now you say this. So in our last podcast, I was saying about what annoyed me with Rogue One, where yeah. they did the whole Peter Cushing thing. Yeah. I thought more about that, actually. And you love it. And they yeah. did make the right decision, because they're just looking on... They're looking for a, from a biggest perspective, I think, and this, you've just got that continuity, albeit the eye doesn't believe it, it doesn't knock you out of the film a little bit. You've, you've just got that continuity, and that's they're the two bits, Leia's face, Peter Cushing's face. As technology gets better and better and better, they can just jump into those bits and maybe just refine it more and more and more. Well, so Leia looks like a I puffer was fish. I was wrong because I, I suggest she does. <laughs> that's, I was wondering what it was. <laughs> it's a little pup, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I said that they should have just had the actor that, who looked quite a lot like Peter Cushing anyway, and you could quite quickly get over the idea. But I think actually, no, I think they made the right decision. You've just got that little bit of graffiti in there that they can just refine mm. as time goes but on. But is it ethical? <clears throat> as it, no, but if you're if, an actor, if, ask, if you're an, an act, he's got no ch- decision in whether he wants to be in this film or not. They yeah. just put him in it. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's. It might politically right. jar against everything he stood for, and th- then there his mug there. But I'm sure they must go round his wife's house, sit down with her, make her a cup of tea or whatever, and talk yeah. about it, right? But that's still not his choice; that's her choice. You're right. But there's, there's, a, there's a whole thing about money. people's estates, though, isn't there? Using images of deceased famous people. Yeah. yeah, but it's one thing using a photograph. Mind you, they did it with Bob Bunkhouse, didn't they? <laughs> Did they? Yeah, he did a load of adverts for cancer when he died. Oh. Yeah. Did he do those before he died? No, he did them after. Wow. Adverts for cancer, that's a bit fucked up, no. isn't it? <laughs> no, not selling it. Oh, <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I didn't think very much of it. But I, I, to be honest, I don't think I've really enjoyed any of the Jurassic World saga. I, the first one was okay. Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. That was ages ago as well. That Quite was Quite like Jurassic Park ride in Florida. Yeah. Have you ever liked a dinosaur-based film? <gasps> I think that's a no. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. Calling for. Yeah, probably not. Oh, well, if you count, like, King Kong. That's not... Well, mm. What, the new one? The old one. Oh. The original one, the black and white one. Or yeah, Jeff the original Bridges. one. Yeah. Or mm. the 70s one. Quite like the seventies one, Jeff Bridges one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but the but the original one that's got a T Rex in it, hasn't it? I don't know. I seen yeah. It. I think it does. I yeah. Think you're right. Oh, and I love the Godzilla films, not the new ones. The the original ones where people dress up in big suits. The with Japanese. Small yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're good. Well, uh, yeah, actually, I suppose if you look as a collective, there's some interesting sort of legends and stuff in it, and interesting monsters. And I like the cartoon Godzilla. Of and Godzuki. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, Godzuki, that was good. Yeah, that's probably as good as it got there. That's, the <laughs> that's where we're going with <laughs> that this. was the pinnacle. <laughs> All right, anyone else got any news? We went to see Hereditary. Yes, we did. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So and now, I, which is, this is billed as... The scariest movie for our generation. The Exorcist ever. for yeah. our yeah. generation. Both right. of them should not and have I think, been on the poster. No, and I think, not not going into spoilers, general kind of themes, but it's, it's just such a stupid... Th- if it was the marketing department who came up with that, they're idiots. Yeah. Because it just sets an entirely unattainable expectation. Yeah. And it does fail to achieve that expectation. The second you read it, you know it's bullshit. Yeah. The second I saw that, I was like, bullshit. And yeah. then I saw the trailer and went, confirmed. <laughs> yeah. They may have got away with it. The first half, first half hour of the film is amazing. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Proper and it, creepy. And why? Because it's very original. It's very fresh. Okay. Um, you're really absorbed into the characters and the story, and it's building up a bit of a pace. Yeah. yeah. And it's just got kind and of the, one concept. Yeah, and really good performances as well. Okay. So, um, Tony Collette uh, plays Annie, uh, Alex Wolf plays her son, and Millie Shapiro plays Charlie, the daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think the three of them... I mean, uh, Gabriel Burns in it, and Anne Dowd is, is quite a key character as well. But those three... They're I think, chopsy. 
brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, they're really but there's, good. But okay. there's something that happens, and then after this thing that happens, yeah. Yeah. That, which is amazing, and you're left like gob- really gobsmacked to thinking, bloody hell. Then it just descends and kind of pull every kind of horror, horror concept or trait and throw yeah. them all in together. Ah, see, because when you started off saying you said it was original, that originality, yeah, and that's what all, went horror... out, all went out the window. Yeah, like ah. half, uh, about half an hour into it. And there's some really good bits where you know there are shots that kind of draw on that classic horror. You, did, did, did I just see something? And you kind of feel the hair on the on your arms stand up. And go, oh, that's going to be amazing. Well, this one, and then a little bit later, right, and then a little bit later. They do a similar thing, and you kind of there's you go, oh, am I seeing something? And then, for me, it went a little bit Keystone Cops, just just yeah. for like five seconds, and you go, what the, f- what have you done there? And come on, <laughs> and there's no logic to it. So if it had been, so we're not this, looking for logic. This is fine. Fuck logic. Well, to a certain extent, if it had been like a possession movie, for example, and yeah. it had been, you know what that is, Laurie, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the um, thing when you got like there's a thing on the back of your neck. <laughs> is that right, Malice Wallace? I think so. Yeah. Pulp Fiction. Right. But if it if it had been that and it had been consistent all the way through, it'd have been amazing. Yeah. Or if it had been something about I don't know demons. Yeah. You know, again, if it'd been consistent, it would have been brilliant. But it didn't. Or, or do a that. kind of culty type thing. <laughs> yeah. Whereas it kind of went. Oh, is there a cop out ending? It's not yeah. like a dream. Yeah. Well, it's not. But again, it's like you see the ending, and it's like, oh well, there's two other films, and yeah. it's just stolen the ending from. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. But you say the beginning part is exceptional. You see some really inventive, new, fresh stuff. You stop yeah? the film after half an hour, you'll go, and then you'll be all right. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. And but there so are like, bits. There are bits in the second half that. Yeah. You know, you go, oh, I did. Oh, that's. Mm. And and actually, the characters in it. Ordinarily, you kind of feel some affinity to them, right? But you don't really, other than Charlie, maybe. Yeah. But you kind of sat there, kind of going, no, oh, yeah. They can die. I don't know whether you all deserve it. Oh, but, okay. You know. So I gave it about seven. I, I think that's, fair, that's yeah. generous seven, that's, really. Yeah, I think it's fair. Okay. But it's worth a look. It's worth a look at. Apparently, it's divided people, you know. Yeah. Mm. Oh, see, I was thinking about this. You know when they say, like, the, the greatest, blah, 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 the most scariest, blah, 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 that's come out for a long time? There was... Uh, is, this is going back quite a while now, actually. I thought about the most recent new film that I did see that was fresh, scary, interesting, that I really rated. Now, I have to go right the way back to Wreck. Remember Wreck? That yeah, Spanish yeah, yeah, yeah. film that came out? Kind of, a little bit came out of nowhere. I think it got a bit of good press, so that's where it bumped on my radar. But when I watched that, I was, I was just kind of blown away by... It's a very, very you know, old basic idea, the whole sort of zombie thing. Um, but it's it's more than that. You actually find out it's like it, it's a possession thing. It's actually it, there's there's, it? there's demons inside of it. And there's right. there's portals and all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff. So that was a really, really great film that surprised me. But um with those original ideas. But uh obviously they with this one. Her- but I don't mind a film not being a ri- using original ideas because you know you've only got a certain amount, haven't you? And it's the way they do it and I yeah. think their problem was they didn't just stick with one idea yeah. if they'd stuck with Put one too idea much in. Okay. yeah there was about three or four different concepts you know it's, I'm amazed that like a spaceship didn't come down as yeah. well at some point right. you know so if, if they just stuck with one and continued the style of the film and kept the tension up it would have been amazing mm. but they just threw too much in at the end I think and there is, there is an element of in all these kind of horror films that are based in people's houses. They're always massive houses mm. and they're always really creepy. Yeah. Why buy a creepy house unless you want your life to come to a shuddering, <laughs> awful end? <laughs> it's just... I it's love a, a creepy house. I love, a, I a, love a creepy house setting. It's great. Yeah. And if you're... Um, for those of you who have kids who are listening, if your kids start having weird kind of clutter around the place... Be a bit careful. Yeah. What? That's like every freaking kid, right? Yeah. Well, kids are demons waiting to get you. Yeah. Uh, basically, that's the moral of that story. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Right, we've got the other news. Is that it? No, that's it from me. No, I've, right. I've been off watching. I've, I've managed to. You went to Blade so Runner many again. films. Yeah, we won't talk about it too much. But I did a little bit of the narrative this time. I managed to play with it as much as I possibly could play with it before it got sore. Did you have fun? Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good fun. He's got a massive grin on his face. Yeah, yeah, that no, was good fun. Excellent. All right then, so <coughs> let's do in the bean. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my choice, I've watched quite a few things this month, but I have chosen the Darren Aronofsky film Mother, which I saw a couple of weeks ago. 
which I thought was brilliant. Is this the um, Jennifer Lawrence, Javier Bardem? That's exactly the one. Right. Yeah, so it's about, again, a massive old house. Uh, she wakes up, it's all a bit weird. If the camera follows her around, her around constantly and you're not quite sure what's going on. He's a really nice, happy guy. He's a writer or an artist or something. And she's like redoing the house because it, it starts with like all the house being burnt and then it all like becomes normal and she's doing this house up. And then this guy turns up who they don't know and uh, Javier just lets them into the house and, and it's, she's going... Oh, this, that's Ed Harris, isn't it? Yeah. And it's like, why, why are you doing this? And then his wife turns up, who's Michelle Pfeiffer, and they just kind of virtually act like they're living there. Right. And then the next thing, their children turn up and uh, she's going, why are these people coming into the house? And it gets more and more crazy. And I, I can't give away what the whole concept is, but it's, you know, you could think it's a little bit pretentious, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just went the whole film. I could have, I, I got to the end of the film and I could have easily just started watching it again. Oh wow! So yeah, I really. That's really pretty. The I trailers. Really I thought you saw it. No, I've, yeah. I've I've seen the trailers, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, so it's. So that's dropped. To, that's dropped on think. Sky, isn't it? So I need to get onto yeah. it. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. How about you, Laurie? Um, I get similar to you. I've watched quite a bit of stuff recently. Um, they live, John Carpenter. You can only choose. Uh, okay, one. all right. I'm gonna choose <laughs> again, John Carpenter. Attack on Precinct Thirteen. Okay. So um, I don't know if. It, you know, it's one of the most well-known of Carpenter's films, but it's just a really sort of basic uh, sort of setup, really, where you've got these sort of cartel gangs that have suddenly to get managed to get shitloads of weapons, really, and in a very sort of sleepy uh, area, as it were, we've got this this jailhouse where some cops just babysitting while they shut the, sh the actual jail down. So him and just a handful of other people are there looking after some inmates. Uh, and then there's this huge siege from these sort of shadowy cartel figures. And it's just basically like a, a, a siege off, as it were. Great soundtrack, good acting, How and just it? good fun. Yeah, who's in How it? Old, who's in it? Yeah. Um, nobody. That's my question Cause, first. Because <laughs> they remade what was your it. Question? How old is it? Yeah. 70 oh, right, okay. It's Jewish because yeah. they remade it as well. Yeah, I haven't seen that with um Lawrence Fishburne, I, th I think it's Lawrence Fishburne and Ethan Hawke, right? That is could, that that could sound brother? about right, huh? Is that Ethan Hawke's brother? That's what I said, Ethan Hawke. You said Ethan Hawke, they're twins, it's difficult. To <laughs> <laughs> but that's a really good one. It's a very, very sort of basic okay. sort of film, but really, really interesting. What did you watch it on? On a TV, I'll oh, shut up. <laughs> what format? Netflix? I bumped into it. I think it was just on TV. Right, on oh, oh, right, and that's okay. always great. There's something about when you put a DVD in or you actually watch it on the TV. I don't know. There seems to be a little bit something You more align with someone alluring. else's scheduling. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of pref I, I weirdly up the there when someone's You're in being the zeitgeist. televised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good stuff. All right, Wynn, what about you? Well, unlike the pair of you, I was telling Laurie on the drive over here, I haven't watched any TV for a month. Good for you. Not deliberately. Oh. We've got some building work happening <laughs> at the house and the, TV, <laughs> the TV's been packed away. Yeah. Um, and I don't watch iPads or on laptops. So this is great. I, the I literally, the only things I've watched over the last month are the two films we're reviewing today. It's been really boring. Oh, have you been to the <laughs> cinema? <laughs> well, I went to the cinema with you. Is that, that's that's it, that's it, yeah. I've been reading books, but... Oh, um, great. There was a series that I, I was watching previously, which I was reminded of thinking about what to put in the beam. And it's Into the Badlands. Okay. Which is an Amazon... I think it's Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's basically... Uh, I think there are three seasons of it now. Um, so not a film, but... Uh, it's, it's basically a kind of dystopian future where this area of a country has been split into nine baronies and the barons are kind of like the feudal lords. And they all have... Um, cogs who are workers and clippers who are assassins and it's basically kind of sword play and it's it's an inter as long as you kind of as you watch it kind of go I'm just going to accept this world <laughs> then you can get into it and it's, it's good yeah, what's, it's what, what's it on? Uh, I think it's Amazon okay alright great when's Dark Crystal going to come out? come on when what, is this prequel? coming? 
No, we're going to get a series, aren't we? The Dark Crystal yeah, but series. I think, yeah, but I think it's a prequel series. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I know a guy, actually, that's been on set. He's been one of the little podlings. He really wanted to be a skeptic. Really? Yeah, yeah, he wanted to be a skeptic. But he's not... You Basically, you give that to famous puppeteers, and he's not quite famous. He's a bit yeah. panto, bless him. Podlings all right, though. He probably, yeah, yeah, probably great. But he said he's he's seen the sets. It's all they've they've obviously they're, they're doing this thing that pretty much everyone's doing now. Let's not CGI this shit. Let's do as much as we can. Yeah. And he said the sets are just phenomenal. They say it's the most beautiful thing he's ever seen in his life. And considering this is Jim Henson's originally, you can't. Yeah. You, you have yeah. to do it. Do yeah. It, I think it's than... his his daughter actually. I think she's manning the ship on this. Oh well, that's good. Um, to but it's gonna be awesome. But I think it's ages. It's taken so long. But anyway. We should be seeing that soon. Excellent. Mm. All right. Okay. What about on the rocks? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go first because I'm going to pass. I haven't seen anything. I can't. Okay. I'm going to say right. like nothing from me. Well, I saw a film called Little Evil, Ooh. which had quite a high rating on Netflix, I think. Um, and it's basically a spoof of The Omen, and it's just awful. I mean, it's just terrible. Um, it's, yeah, there's, there's nothing more there's to nothing say. There's nothing more to say, <laughs> okay. really. I mean, when well, you, you know, say it's a spoof of The Omen. Oh, yeah, so, you know... Is it trying to be funny? Oh, yeah, it's supposed okay. to be one of... Yeah, it's like a comedy spoof of it. You know, oh, he's such a nice guy, really, and... Oh, I actually, you know, I don't know how I got pregnant. You know, all this kind of nonsense. And hey, little guy, you know that it's a, a, the father. Uh, he's like the stepfather, and he comes into his life, and he's trying to befriend him, but he keeps, you know, killing people off and all this kind of stuff. Right. Uh, it's it's just terrible. You know, it's poke. There's a very pained look on your face. Do you yeah, know and oh. and I think it's even worse because I like the Omen so much. Yeah. It's like f- fucking around with yeah. the Omen. <laughs> so, is that actually an official? It's not an official remake of Omen, is it? No, it's a, it's a spoof yeah. of the Omen. Right, oh, I see. You said okay. that. So, That's why I said <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that time a little bit slower. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry. Ah, how about you? So my On the Rocks, actually, I'm going to be, again, I'm going to be a bit of an idiot. It's, it's not massively On the Rocks for me, but it, there was, there's some parts that are a bit pants that didn't work. So this is M. Nate Shade Shamalamalamas. Yes, Split. Uh, Split. Yeah, have you seen it? I have seen it. I've yeah. seen it as well. You've seen it as yeah, well? Okay, yeah, yeah. great, great, great. So, I mean, it starts off, and I think, um, what's his Scottish face? James, uh, James McAvoy. James McAvoy. I think he does a really good little turn in it. You know, it's he's obviously times, playing all these different characters, similar to, you know, the Orphan Black series, which not a lot of people have seen, but it's really great. She basically plays thousands of different characters, does a really good job. And he does a very, you know, similar thing here. Um, and, you know, that's really good, and it's the film sort of sets itself up, and you follow it through. Um, but where the element for the Roxy bit for me is, it kind of condones self harm. It's, it's okay, you know. You're true if you're really, really disturbed yeah. and pained. Um, and then the way they tie it into uh, a film that I actually really like uh, is Unbreakable. Yeah. You've got this last, last scene, and they should have made this film maybe a five or six years before because. Yeah. Bruce is looking nappy. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've, they've, have you seen Shamalayamanamam has just uh, just sent out the teaser poster for the third film in the trilogy called Glass. Right. So it's unbreakable split and glass. A glass will be about. Okay. Well, it's it's put, pulling them all in together. So yeah, Samuel, L. Samuel Jackson, L. Jackson's character, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So Mr. I do glass. like that idea. It did make me smile. It, it was just, it had just some before, good bits, but a lot. Yeah. It was a bit of it was cringy. Yeah. I yeah, did yeah, like yeah, it yeah. when, when he was the playing the kid. middle-aged woman or the oh. kid, really. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the kid was supposed to be eight. Yeah, he's, he definitely yeah, didn't feel like an eight. I'm sure he's, he's got real... kids. I'm sure he's got kids. So he must have been challenged. Like, <laughs> Fucking hell, your kids are advanced. That's an eight-year-old. <laughs> but um, yeah, there was lots of stuff that just yeah. Just didn't quite work, really, did it? And that and that and that that bit where you see kind of Bruce at the end sort of saved it for me because I was really thinking, what is that the point of this film? Mm. You know, self harm and pain. But I understand that's the channel into allowing these other spirits or personalities into you because you're you're kind of fleeing away from reality, or you know, giving yourself exposure to these other sort of skills or techniques to just get through life, as it were. That's kind of the premise of it, isn't mm. it? That sort of split, split personality. But anyway, yeah. All right, good stuff. 
Right, let's move on then. Let's get on to our main feature presentation. Woo! Da You know what it's like, James. What's that, mate? Finally tired of living in London, you spent ages looking for a new place for you and Colombo to call home. Somewhere you can take long walks along the beach, enjoy the fairground on the pier, and immerse yourself in your favourite culture, Americana. Excellent! I love America! Big Elvis fan. I know you are, mate. And that's why you've picked the beautiful Californian coastal paradise of Santa Carla. 370 days of sunshine a year, a wonderfully liberal, artisanal and creative community with wall-to-wall wieners on sticks, truth, justice and the American way. There's just one small problem. Uh, is it all the damn vampires? That's right, mate. It's all the damn vampires. They bloody well ruin everything, don't they? Certainly do, mate. But you found yours in Colombo's paradise on Earth. Are you going to let a load of upside down sleeping turn your noodles to worms and your rice to maggots, blood sucking lost boys ruin your idol? Well, when you put it like that, I don't want to, but what can I do? It's a great question, James, and it shows willing. What you need is the patented Frog Brothers Vampire Survival Kit, complete with wooden stakes for driving through their undead hearts, garlic salt, garlic socks, garlic t shirts, and a garlic laced jock strap, specifically designed for both groinal support and vampire repulsion. With this top-of-the-range kit, you and Colombo can trip the light fantastic up and down the Pacific foreshore at any time of day or night, completely carefree. Oh, brilliant. I love tripping the light fantastic. Who doesn't, James? Who doesn't? That's right, kids. For the measly sum of £869,000, payable in three equal instalments, you too can own the patented Frog Brothers Vampire Survival Kit. First come, first staked. Safety warning, while garlic effectively repels vampires, the combination of too many heavily garlic-laced products may well cause human repulsion as well. High concentrations of garlic can cause minor and major irritation, so wear your garlic jockstrap with caution. Alright, so, um, coming of age movies. I don't know what was wrong with me last month, Go on. but there must have been something seriously wrong to allow me to agree to let you choose Salem Slot as a coming <laughs> of age movie. Yeah. I don't know what I was saying. It's right. Because you tricked me because I like Stephen King so much and I like Salem Slot. <laughs> right. But there is no way on earth this is a coming of age movie. We have got things like My Girl, Juno, The Lost Boys, Stand By Me, It, The Sandlot. Yeah. <laughs> and you chose Salem Slot. <laughs> yeah. It's from Mark's And they don't perspective. come of age because they died. Be- well, he... Mark's perspective. And that was by claim Too when loose. I first lumped this baby up. Too loose. I right don't think we should even review he's it. There with David. Oh, well, he's there Hold on. No, I spent three hours watching <laughs> this bloody and There we are. We will review it. <laughs> but it's just not a coming of age movie. I, I, I know. I'm always going to be slippery. I'm always... I'm sorry. But from Mark's perspective, you see his... His, his journey. But I think we lost out on a lot of good yeah. films Well, there. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Stand By Me um, is obviously the kind of ob- ob- screamingly obvious one, but does that really it, But even into... if you wanted to choose Stephen King, It, there's it, seven it, kids yeah. all come of age <laughs> in that all film. Of age. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, anyway, right, so um, I've got a bit of information about coming of age, which is a bit harder than usual. Uh, on TV, I, found, um, I chose The Wonder Years. Great yeah. series. That was brilliant. Fred Savage. Yeah. Um, the Inbetweeners, uh, Dawson. That is <laughs> just tenuous. always makes me really uncomfortable watching, watching the Inbetweeners. I do like the Inbetweeners. Like, oh my God. And then Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Which I never actually watched, but... Hi, I I'm know James Louise Vanderbeck. Did. <laughs> yeah. did you watch it? Dawson's Crack? Yeah. That was a uni, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I may have seen a couple of episodes. Okay. Your wife was a massive fan. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, only because yeah. you know at the time I was sharing a house with her and I, and uh, I was bored for oh, the hour yeah. when everyone sat down to watch Dawson's Creek and I wouldn't refuse to watch it. I had nothing to do. You had stuff to do. You could go yeah. off and do stuff. That's what uh, you do. Oh, by the way, just it. sorry to interrupt. Um, was Paul Marilyn Manson? No, no, <laughs> no. Yesterday, um, Louisa she wanted me to raise this that she can do a good Tom Hardy impression. Well, how does it go? Well, I can't do it, but um, she she wants a, a guest From what a film? guest yes. slot. Does he Just have... all of his films. Oh, great! Does he have a have a thing? Yeah, that... he's got Bane, or I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, or what's what's the other thing he's been? He's been in um, the Recently. Revenant. Yeah, but no. So yeah, but no. But yeah, but no. Um, from Peaky Blinders, he oh, plays uh, a Jewish gangster. Oh right. So I reckon she's going to unzip an accent. Right, so yeah, if anyone yeah. else has got an actor that they want to send into the show, <laughs> an impression of a celebrity, uh, but out of film actor, then we'd be more than happy That'd to play the battle. Yeah, That'd be great. Yeah, we can play a game. We could guess who, who they're trying is. to be. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, send in your things now. Actually, should we make a recording of her? Should we play her now? Her impression? No, not now. Okay. Because it's going to be too hard because I want to get this out today. Okay. We're, we're late. All right. All right. Sorry um, about that. 
Okay, so music, I just thought everybody's coming of age in music, so I didn't bother writing it. You know, they're all about that age. Who died? James Dean. Did he? Yeah, Corey Hain, River Phoenix. They were all about, they came of age, they died. They I did, thought. yeah, like these beautiful little buds. I thought then... they would pop, weren't they all around 27? Isn't that like the magic number? Yeah, yeah. but well, not all of them were, but that's close enough. I all don't right. know. <laughs> <laughs> You've already come of age when you're 27. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you'll be so, younger. Yeah. I think River Phoenix definitely in that. Group. I think okay. Right. Yeah. Um, top five grossing films. Well, I don't, they're not really the top five grossing films, but I've already said them. Really, My Girl, Juno, The Lost Boys, The Sandlot, Stand by Me, and It. So there we go. Right. So you pick some of them. <laughs> Fucking hell. So let's start <laughs> it with. What? S- <laughs> really? Yeah. You can't. No, it's it's just not excusable. It is. Are you? Who's choosing next month? You are. No, uh, no, no, he chose that. Ah, yeah. ah, ah. Oh, so, no, wait a minute, because I have to pick what you guys yeah. plan. So we can pick, like, proper ones. Yeah, mm. well, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, okay, so let's start with Salem's Lot. Shall we have a clip? Yeah. Ben Mears has been away too long, and now at last he's come home. The men fought at Valley Forge. Daddy, come back safe. Home to the childhood memories, to the old familiar faces. To a life unmolested by time. And with your saints, let him rejoice in your presence forever. We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Home to Salem's Lot. A town too good to be true. What was that? Did you happen to notice the time when the boys left? We shouldn't have gone through the woods. It's a shortcut. Then they should have been here half an hour ago. Wait! Danny, wait! Something is happening. Right, okay. So, first impressions. Um, when did everybody first see this? Uh, about a week ago. You saw it a week ago? I was so lucky. I was sat next to my mum, staying up a little bit too late. A mum allowed me just to sit there and watch it. It was in two uh, episodes. So, one night it was on, really late, you get the first half. And then, you know... Mum, can I come and sit back and watch the second? Yeah, of course you can. And she let me watch the second half the next night. Uh, so that's my first experience of it. I was probably, I must have been around 11, something like that, 10 or 11. And, we, wow! Did it scare you? Yeah, it scared the yeah. shit out of me. I was, uh, but I was obsessed with it. That's when I completely fell in love with it. Obviously, there's, there's just such, a, there's such an awesome amount of images in it. They're just, yeah, completely affected. Well, we'll get on to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, I came to a bit later. I think I didn't see it until I was about 16, 17, something like that. Yeah. And when I first saw it, I, I thought it was very dated, you know, um, because we'd obviously had all the Nightmare on Streets and things. I, I think I'd seen The Lost Boys before I saw this and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, but before we do that, let, um, let me tell you a bit of information about it. So it was released in 1979 as a TV movie. In two parts, as Laurie just said. Director Tobe Hooper, who also directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Fun House, Poltergeist, Life Force, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. This guy is awesome. Okay. Yeah, he's great. So the screenplay was by Stephen King, who wrote the novel, and Paul Monash. (coughs) And it made four million. Uh, Notable actors, David Soul from Starsky and Hutch. Yeah. Yeah. Looking good in tight jeans. (laughs) James Mason. Brilliant. Yeah. Amazing. Lance Kerwin. I think he played... I don't know. We'll have to check on that. Don't Someone know. check on that. It could be Mike. Is it Mike the gardener? Yeah, I, that's who I was thinking. And Bonnie Bede- Bedalia. Yeah. Yeah. So who? who is what, so I saw Die this. Hard. Die She's Hard. Holly Gennaro. Holly Gennaro in Die Hard. Or, or I was sat there McLean. looking at it kind of going... Holly McLean? I know her. Where do I know her from? Where do I know her from? And eventually it went... She's in Die Hard! <laughs> Yes, she is. Okay, so, um, first thoughts. What do we think of this film? Uh, I enjoyed it. Yes, you did. But... Damn you, Alan! <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's, it's just one of those Stephen King adaptations that you kind of get used to the fact that... I think he's... I love him as a writer, but he's a novelist, not a screenwriter, I think. Right. So I, they, all, these, all these kind of films... His novels never really transpose brilliant, or rarely 
I don't think. Bearing in mind the novels, I think are amazing. Yeah, you always lose something in in translation. I think I think this freaking I, I think and it, this totally works. And it, and it get, well, no, I think it works. <laughs> it works. I think it works. And you can actually see the fact that it's if you didn't know it was Stephen King. Yeah, I think that he comes across in this brilliantly. You can tell just the pace of it, the the kind of the the layers that he's building on yeah. it. You yeah, can kind of. Well, this is clearly Stephen King. I I agree with what you're saying, but I I. I think this is one of the only ones that, does that actually works. Uh, so I, haven't yes. read it. I haven't read it. Uh, well, I've never, I'm trying, I've never I'm, read I'm it. I'm trying to see it again without because I've read it a couple of times. I don't so think it should be about this. There's, book, no, that's what I'm trying to do, not bring that into it. But there's a reference to a baby going missing from the morgue. And there's a whole bit in the book about yeah. this baby coming back and like nuzzling on his mother's breast and all that kind of stuff. But if if you just look at it as a film, I think it takes all the layers of the different characters and actually yeah. puts them together. Where yeah. a lot of the time you think it's too bloated and too yeah. full, this kind of moves about at just enough of a pace yeah. to keep everyone interested. Yeah. And it has, like you say there, it has characters. You know, you know, Danny Glick and what's her name? Uh, well, basically her mum, her father, the, the police chief, the police chief's sidekick. All of them are realised, contained, you know, characters that you feel and understand you know the old teacher mike the you know the graveyard digger every character actually is a character bon bon uh, boom boom bonnie yeah you so know whole, oh, yeah. so we're jumping around a bit yeah, so yeah, just yeah. just for context yeah. right so it's set in a town called salem's lot short mm-hmm. for jerusalem's lot um and um this writer what's his name again ben, ben mears ben mears he comes back to the town because he grew up there as a kid and he yeah. was terrorized by this house um, the, the Marston House. That's yeah. it. Um, and because this so guy... So horrific. His mum used to work there. Yeah, that and he was, she was a housekeeper then. Uh, the old guy, Huey Marston, yeah. was uh, basically a child molesting killer. Yeah. And I think I, he saw him hanging in there or something. So he's come back to the house to write, uh, to the town to write a book about this house. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, you've got this vampire Straker. turning up. You bet. Well, Straker, a shadowy character, turns up Which in town. Which is James Mason. His, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Who is opening up He's his an, antique exotica yeah. shop. Yeah. Him and his business partner, Mr. Barlow, who yeah. we never see, yeah. um, you know, just basically setting up in town. And then Straker buys the Marsden house so you've and got, moves in. And this is King's second or third novel. You've got all oh, really? the classic elements of King coming through here. So you've got the main uh, protagonist being a writer, yeah. the haunted yeah. house, the, um, the sleepy town, you know, the, the English, well, the, well, the American, you know, the sleepy American town. Yeah. Um, all those kind of subplots of society, yeah. of a contained little society, all the affairs. The outsider, all the, with, the outsider coming in, setting up his, I mean, Needful Things was basically all about a yeah. guy coming into yeah. a town opening a shop and then selling people he was a devil basically yeah. selling things Grant, to the you know, yeah. you know that actor's name which one the guy who needed for things needed for things for things needed for things <laughs> no I can't, I can't that's really cedar cedar that's, that's Max, Max, Mon. Max oh Mon. Jesus <laughs> we're, we're, we're teaching jokes today it's learning things <laughs> so um, uh, yeah. the, the interesting thing is though um, it's not that interesting but Barlow as the vampire. I'm I'm reading the um, Dark Tower series at the moment. Right. Yeah. And he's referenced in the Dark Tower. Yeah. Also, I think va- also Barlow has got a much larger. I know we weren't talking about the book, but he's got a much larger presence in the book, and it, um, he talks and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Whereas he's basically Nosferatu in this. Isn't yeah. He? And that and that I think was my. Oh, I think so that was good. my. If if they'd got. I wanted a bit more from Barlow, I think. No, he didn't need did. any more. It was powerful as you hell. You didn't need any more. I wanted more. <laughs> I mean, you don't I'm, want him talking, though, do you? You don't want to hear no. the cut of his jaw. No, 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 no. I think the, pro- I think the thing was, because James Mason, as his familiar, striker, yeah. was so good. Yeah. So fucking you, good. He could do all the bits, couldn't yeah, he? Yeah, so yeah. there was a bit where he uh, Barlow flies through the window, kills a couple of people, and Mason turns up and just says everything yeah it was basically yeah. basically the master having a stand the up master, for the priest the master the priest the is there so the your master. faith against his faith yeah. Yeah. and the oh, priest is there yeah, that was and good. obviously he's got the cross but then obviously you see a fault in the priest's eye like a flash of doubt or whatever it may be yeah. and then the master just grabs the crucifix screws it up chucks it on the floor 
And then a lovely striking the f- violin kicks yeah. in. The thing is, Brilliant. the characters were so good. I bet we could choose virtually any character, and you could think of a good bit that they had. Yeah. For example, the estate agent guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, he's there getting it on with his secretary or whatever. Boom, boom, Bonnie. And then yeah. he's about to get shot in the face. That yeah, bit's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. And then he walks husband. out the door and goes, "Yeah, get the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The music's great in this. I love it. Really, um, like the theme tune. <laughs> You've got all that stuff. But yep. when I sing it, I always keep thinking of the Crystal Maze. <laughs> it does do that, though. Um, awesome. What do yeah. you think of the plot and the story? Absolutely love it. Like yeah. we've already touched on here, you've got that sort of basic idea. You know, a guy that's got memories is coming back to his hometown. That hometown is completely realised. And then just the way the characters just tick through. And, the, and obviously this, this, this appearance of Striker. Straker, sorry. And the way that slowly sort of infects the town, you see the characters fall into pieces, as it were. It's just it's just wonderful. And then you got you got the house as well with the, you know the end climactic scenes, wonderful. The master again, he sort of appears later on in the film. So you just got this wonderful pace. I just I absolutely love this film I so t- much. I tell you what the t- uh, what it reminded me of a lot. Yeah, Twin Peaks. I was looking at it and right, I was thinking right. the way they kind of laid all the characters and stuff. Yeah. It was just had a real element. I think especially because the affair was going on and he was sneaking around the back. It reminded me of a lot of Twin Peaks. But I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. It's very cool. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's good. What yeah. do we think about the effects? Awesome. <laughs> just really awesome. Very, very basic. Again, this is my opinion. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I see your face now. <laughs> I see your face. It was 1979, I suppose. So, but I, I thought this and then I thought... Because I thought, ah, you know, they're not great. Um, and then I thought, but it is 1979. And then I thought, actually, last episode, um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers was made before this, and we said the effect in that were brilliant. Yeah. It's a budgetary thing, I think. Yeah, I think It was so. made for the, TV. So the, the eyes look good. More. I really like the Agreed, eyes. the eyes were good. Right. Yeah. Okay, big... Now, this is a really big point of mine. This is a, a, a huge reason why I love this film as well. So we talk, if we're talking about the effects, right, so what essentially the vampire has is just kind of sort of bluish purpley skin and amazingly bright yellow eyes. And then obviously you've got the, 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 the fangs. Um, and the talony. And the talony bits. So it's really just a bit of makeup and a couple of bits that are glued on. And that's pretty much about it. Um, but this is the thing about this film. The vampire is... It's essentially... It's, it's a monster. It's, it's take... You know... Where you've kind of got nowadays, where you've got sort of Twiglet and all that stuff, their their concept of a vampire is it's it's, it's you. You've been bitten, yeah. but then now you it's have really to shiny. live in life. You know, like yeah. um, uh, Interview of a Vampire, Lestrade, and all that stuff. It basically Lestrade was Lestrade, became a vampire, and now he has to live and get on being a vampire. To me, that's not a vampire. A vampire is you. You get bitten. You're now you're now a monster. You yeah. are you are just completely there. And the only sort of relation to what you were is that power to manipulate the people that love you and have lost you. So if you're tapping at the window, going let me in, yeah, let me good. in, let me in, that's Mike. That's creepy. Your eyes and that and just that connection to that. That's the only thing that really overlaps from when you were that and then now you are this. But you're the vampire, just doing it malevolently, just to hypnotise you in. Yeah. So you I, will open the window. I think you've got that, but I think you've also in this, you've also got a memory of yourself, like a shadow of yourself. So when the mother wakes up in Daddy, the morgue, where are you, Daddy? yeah, that was the first thing she was kind of saying. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. But, but it's very subtle. She's still now a monster. She's not her. Yeah. Do yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's. And that's this. I think is this is probably the only vampire film that we've had for years. Because I mean, when Lost Boys came out, all of a sudden you've went back to the effects thing. They're cool, they they became sort of Klingonic. Yeah, yeah. They had like yeah. these big sort of brow things. So then that happened in Buffy. So now vampires look like Klingons. Yeah. When did that happen? Yeah, yeah. Um, and Klingons don't look like Klingons anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. <laughs> What's the, going on with the world? But that, that so affects- their decision to make these vampires look the way they did. And sort of position the way as this malevolent monster, monsteristic, you know, yeah. kind of evil. I fucking love, and you don't really get that anymore. There's but no real. And I agree that that's great, but that isn't the, the only effect in the film. Oh right, yeah. So from an effects perspective, yeah, you know, when when he when they kill him at the end and his decomposition is a little bit stop play, stop play, stop yeah. play. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's not and very the teeth good. disappear and then they reappear. Yeah. You and, know, and, and there's, that works. And the bit when um, Danny Glick 
is killed in the hospital and there's a, a massive smattering of blood it's a massive smattering of Ribena. It's th- so from, and that's what I mean by the effect yeah. being okay, low budget. Yeah. And but I did like his kind of pose on the bed when they found him dead. Yeah. There's no, like there's no cat. massive splattering of blood. There is a load of blood in it. I don't remember that bit. I think there's one drop of blood in this film. No, I've got it. It says Ribena instead of blood at hospital. It uh, could have been Ribena because bed. the nurse comes in and screams, but he is laid all sort of contorted. No, it's, it's definitely blood. Right. I don't remember blood. I thought there's one drop of blood it's all in this drained. whole film. The, yeah. That's on Mike's bed. I honestly don't remember that oh, bit. I enough. remember them walking in, the kids like that. Oh, so it might actually have been Ribena? Yeah, I think, I think she was holding it right. <laughs> so that's actually a very good effect. That's a good effect. That's a good effect. <laughs> I like the effect of um, Danny as well and the little kid coming through the coming window. Yeah, that's, so that's the moment. Yeah, that's that the moment. Good. When I was a kid, that was the moment that blew my mind. But what, we, what I said about hereditary, if your kids have weird trinket <laughs> stuff around their rooms... Troubles are coming. And, yeah, but he did all right with that. I love the way he got pulled off it, yeah. his little cross. And yeah, oh, that's when well. the older kid turns up. What's the name of the little kid? Uh, little kid. Danny's little brother, yeah. anyway. That's yeah. the scariest one for me, when he turns up. And they use a very, <laughs> yeah. very simple trick. Well, again, what we're talking about, effects. They they reverse the film. Yeah. So as as he arrives, yeah. he's, he's got weird movement to him, and the smoke obviously kind of sort of appears billowing. as he appears. Yeah. And, then yeah. and then he comes into the room and... oh. It's yeah, just that's a, good. such an awesome, right. awesome scene. So, what's what's your memorable scene? Well, it's definitely that one, and and I think mm. it's probably when I first saw the master because you know, at the time I'd, I'd see like these weird photos every now and again of Nosferatu, this really scary looking thing. You know, I'll have my horror magazines as it were. You know, only ever see like shots of it. I never saw the film, but then I get to see him like you know yeah. this huge thing turns up. So that the the boy coming and. The master. Yeah, I I think part of the master for me was a bit ruined by the fast show. Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah, they do. They do <laughs> Harry Enfield and um, Paul Whitehouse did a sketch. Yeah. Of Nosferatu, and as you say, there's a real similarity between Nosferatu and Barlow the master, and that kind of it, it's a bit, especially when he first appears, it's almost like. Ta-da! Yeah, it is, but it, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does do. Ta-da! Yeah, and, and it was that. it was a little bit. I could just hear. Paul Whitehouse in the background, so that it, right, it took okay. the edge off that for me slightly. All right, and but I, I agree. I think the the scenes when the Glicks, the Glick boys, are coming at the window, I think those are really really good. And I really liked the scene we mentioned it earlier, where um, Bam Bam Bonnie's husband is catching them, mm. her and her. That, that whole with him in the shotgun, you're there thinking, holy shit! I did not expect him to blow this guy's face off, particularly wearing those shorts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are awesome. My. I think my memorable scene is going to be Sorry. the bit at the end where he's pulled out um, what's the name of Straker? The vampire? Yeah. yeah. Um, and the boy's sitting there watching because he's hurt his ankle and the other he vampires knocked. are slowly yeah, yeah, climbing up it, yeah. just out of focus. Yeah, 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 that's brilliant. And he's knocked the light as well with the stakes. Yeah, he's so got the yeah. light shining. So again, yeah. like, like Toby Hooper, he knows what he's I doing. I do yeah. say, they, he knows what they he's doing. didn't make much of an effort to find what's the name at the end. No, I, know, I saw that. <laughs> Just let the house burn. Because she, because she, she's obviously not been turned into a vampire at that point no. because they're all asleep. So yeah. where is she? Have yeah. a proper look. Yeah, exactly. Or kill the other vampires and then find her. Yeah, yeah. completely agree. And this is back to my coming of age. Lovely so when, added, but though, no, lovely added. <laughs> when do they find her? They find her in Mexico or something. She don't finds, they? Them, no, in she Guatemala. finds her in Guatemala. Guatemala. But that's your point earlier that. This is great because the vampires have no kind of residual element of who they are. That the end that goes out the window. That's true. Yeah, yeah. There is, but, but, but it's, it's, it's all because of a malevolent. Because this is what I'm saying yeah. about where Twiglet. He is completely the same person, but he's oh, just yeah, yeah. getting on. But with that's being, just that's because those are stupid. Malevolently trying to. Yeah, but that's but, all vampires are malevolent. So you talk well, about no, no, the Strad no, no, no. in interview with the vampire. Strad, yeah, yeah. But he only kills these women because that's what he's got it's to do cool. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's. But he hasn't got like this. Sort of like driven the, the devil. He's not the same what? thing anymore. Yeah. He's evil. What about Duckula? He's not malevolent. No, he's true. They just he's don't do it. This is the only film I can't genuinely cannot think of another vampire film where they are vampires. And that wonderful now. I think we should score it. Can I just quickly one yeah. one final thing? Your comment about how great the eyes were. The the bit when Mike the Gravedigger comes back and he's just Look sat in the, the chair. Yeah, yes. and the teacher. That's. That's pretty Look good. Yeah, teacher. he's very good actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Right, all right, let's go it. Okay, you got your score sheets ready? I do. I'm pre-scored. Oh, well done, Wyndham. I'm not pre-scored. 
Okay. All right. Okay. Performances. Five. Nine. Nine. Eight. Effects. Seven. Five. Eight. Plot. Nine. Five. Eight. <laughs> Rewatch factor. Nine. Nine. Three. <gasps> it's three hours long. Yeah. I don't know if that comes to a hours. timeline around. You've got to camp out. But uh, the, the original way you've got to eat it is actually in two, in two sections. Hefty so. meals, yeah. Rewatch f- uh, factor. We just did Oh, that. sorry. Direction, seven. Nine. Five. Cinematography, seven. Five. Seven. Sound and music, seven. Five. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> because it is, it's got that cliches about it, but it's just wonderful. And like, you, you know, when, when he runs out from Boom Boom Bonnie and the hand comes out, it's ginning! The, there were a couple it. of those zooms were brilliant. The hand zoom yeah. is great. Yeah. And there's one on... Uh, Danny's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he comes up, you yeah. see the shadow. You just see the shoulders and the yeah. head, and you don't know who it is. Turns yeah. out that was that was Straker. Originality six. I've gone five because it borrows very heavily from Dracula. Yeah, yeah. That's why I do. But that. it's just it, this is King's idea. What if vampires turned up in a little town? In America, oh, a little okay. American okay. town. That, that's where yeah. he gets five points. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Six. 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 All right. Enjoyability six. Eight. Eight. And life changing, past or present, I gave it a five because it didn't really change my life when I first saw it. Nine. Zero. All right, so let's add a past scores and see where we are. This always takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> this is when you should pre score. Smugly sat here. Okay, well, I get 74. I gave it 44. 76. Gives it a grand total of 194. And therefore, a movie lighthouse rating of 66, uh, 64.6. Oh! Right, it puts it in second place. Yes, it does! So, just below Phantom of the Parrot dies. Yes, it and does! And above Crash. Great. Well, oh, that's good. I'm happy with that. Uh, am I alright with that? Yeah, you're right with that. Yeah, I think I'm alright. Yeah, I think so. Paradise, Salem's Lot, Crash. Even though Crash is a better film, but whatever. <laughs> you know what it's like, James. What's that, mate? It's the end of a busy week, and you and Columbo have just finished preparations for another one of your famous dinner parties. The prawns have been cocktailed 70s style, the pheasant is roasting slowly in the oven, the trifle has been suitably fed with sherry, and the cheese is slowly rising to room temperature. Oh, excellent. It sounds like a throw a gastronomic extravaganza. That's exactly what you throw, mate. But there is a problem. Over the last few days, you've become aware of some sort of entity, and it's covering things in slime, and it's scoffing all your food. Oh no, is it a focused on terminal repeating phantasm or a class 5 full roaming vapour? That's exactly what it is, mate. Oh, I bet it's a real nasty one as well. Couldn't be nastier. But what are you going to do about it? I don't know, cancel the dinner party and phone Max von Sutter? Well, it's an option, but bringing in Big Max might be a little overkill. No, what you need is a fully patented proton pack and trap. Harnessing the power of the unlicensed proton particle accelerator, you can cause wanton destruction throughout your house, destroying light fittings, table decorations and wall hangings alike, before ensnaring your ghoul and capturing it in your patented foot-operated ghost trap. Woohoo! Well done me! Well done you indeed, James. Well done you. That's right, kids. For the measly sum of £869,000, payable in three equal instalments, you too can own a patented unlicensed proton particle accelerator and foot-operated trap. We are ready to believe you. Safety warning. Backhorn proton particle accelerators should be operated with extreme caution as crossing the streams could cause all life as you know it to stop instantaneously and every molecule in your body explode in a speed of light. All right, so, Donnie Darko. Um, should we play a clip? Yeah. It was as though this plan had been with him all his life, pondered through the seasons. Now, in his 15th year, crystallized with the pain of puberty. <laughs> So, why'd you move here? My mom had to get a restraining order against my stepdad. He has emotional problems. Oh, I have those too. What kind of emotional problems does your dad have? I met a new friend. Real or imaginary? Your cup, Tony. Imaginary. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about it. It was released in 2001. Director was Richard Kelly. Screenplay, Richard Kelly. Box office, it made seven and a half million at the US box office. And... 
It had Jake Gillenhall, Jenna Malone, Mary McDonald, Drew Barrymore, Maggie Gillenhall, Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze. Anyone else? Seth Rogen. Yeah. yeah. There's all sorts of people. Loads of people film. in it. Yeah, yeah it's Loads obviously one of those films. Sometimes you get this film where they break out kind of film. came from there. Yeah. Yeah. Noah Weil, isn't it? Okay. I thought Ryan Reynolds was in it because there's that one of Donnie's mates um, who's like a wise talking asshole, basically. Yeah. And I thought it was, that's, that's Ryan Reynolds, isn't it? Is it? It's no, not no, really. It. Well, it no. So, um, first, when did everyone first see this? I went to see it at the cinema. Me when too. We were, when I was at college. Um, and I really liked it when I first saw it at the cinema. I thought it was different, it yeah. was interesting, yeah. quite refreshing. Yeah, it's what great. About? I really enjoyed it at the cinema. So I didn't see it at the cinema, but I saw it maybe a year or so after that. So I did actually see it round about time. when it came out. Yeah. Mm. Really good. Now, coming back to it, yep. I thought it was a little bit dated and I wasn't as impressed, certainly as much as when I first saw it. I thought it suddenly, it felt old. Really? And I don't know if it was some of the effects or that I just thought it, it didn't grab me half as much this time it watching it again. I, so I'd almost completely forgotten what happened in the film. Uh, uh, bearing, uh, other than the kind of key, there's a big rabbit. Yeah, um, which is handy. Yeah. So you've come back to it fairly yeah, and it fresh. Absolutely, completely grabbed me again. Yeah. It, it, to me, it, you know, you know it's, it's dated insofar as obviously everybody's that much younger, and but it, 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 for me, it still it still shone quite brightly. And yeah, some of the effects you kind of go, yeah. But Definitely still stands up. I think yeah, the only it. effects that uh, any element for me that could construe as, as dated is that you keep getting this eye that keeps flashing up. When the eye, an, an eye flashing up on a film is absolutely fine, I'm fine with. But once you start putting like data and like computer readouts on it and all this kind of stuff that yeah. bit is a bit, it's a bit timed yeah. as yeah. it were now uh, right so just a little synopsis about it so it's about a guy called Donnie Darko and um, he's um, got some mental health problems um, he sees a rabbit called Frank yeah but that's not his mental health problems the Frank stuff's not the mental yeah. health stuff and um, uh, it turns into like a, a kind of this is a coming of age movie Definitely. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thankfully. Uh, but um, it's also about um, some like impending disaster and then it has time travel and stuff in it as it well. It does, yeah. Now, the other thing to mention before we carry on is there's a couple of versions of this film, mm -hmm. isn't there? Are there? Yeah. So I watched the director's cut. Now, you see, I'm not sure I did. Right. I'm not sure I did. Because I'm not sure I remember those. I, bits. I was thinking, I was just nodding with you, kind of going, I don't pay attention. I to don't remember films. those don't bits. Really now, there's those. two very different versions of this film. Right. Uh, really? Are they yeah. really that different? To yeah. what degree? Well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I well, really if you watch one and they're very well, different. Well, I, watch watch I haven't watched both of them, but that when you're talking about that I bit, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. No. Oh, right, okay. So in the director's cut, yeah, there's just... And there's really no reason to it. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's, it's basically kind of... Trying and it, to who, denote whose perspective is that eye from? It's no, it's no one. It just it comes in. Is it the letter eye right, or an eyeball? It. <laughs> oh, that's a very good point. It's an eyeball. Okay, it's right. an eyeball. I was and what, thinking the same thing. What that eyeball represents is essentially the science that's going on. So basically, oh, time yeah. has split. This is and some wormholes appeared there at that specific time. But that's also correlating with another this is time. Einstein, Rosen, Bridges, and all that kind of it's stuff. It's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, but. At the more you go into the film as the film goes on, you realise it's just complete bullshit. It's, it's just a happy, this is a yeah, mechanism I'm going to use. it doesn't work at all. Yeah. But um, it's just really essentially, you know, a Christmas carol. It's, it's you know, Scrooge, you know, coming out of time and going back in the past, going back to the future, making change. Actually, no, Scrooge, because he comes back to the present, blah, blah, blah. But maybe like... Um, it's nothing like Scrooge. It's, it's a wonderful nothing. Life. He doesn't go back in time or anything. Well, it's a wonderful life. Groundhog he does. Day. It goes back in time at the end, kind of, to reset what's happened. Yeah, but so he has to die, basically. He has to be laying in bed. He yeah. has to have the yeah the thing fall upon him. It, but it's, I, so me and Wyndham have seen one version, yeah. you've seen another, and we have no idea what the differences are. No. Right. Other than, <laughs> Welcome other to the than... movie Lighthouse, shining a light through the following <laughs> film. <laughs> other than if your version reminds you of Scrooge, it is very different. 
Well, yeah, it's this, you know, it's that, it's that kind of how he uh, touches people and changes people's life. You know, shut up, shut up. And he gets their headphones, it's okay. And he falls in love with, um, what's the character's name? I can't remember her name. But she, you know, once he's died, she's actually never met him, but she's affected by him. So, you know, there's... so the characters yeah. Yeah. are brilliant. Yeah, they are. Okay, I, re- I mean, I love Drew Car- Barrymore anyway. I thought her character, I said she was She great. plays the teacher. Yeah. Young teacher, kind sassy. of stretching boundaries. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and I like the inhibited... Girl, who you were just talking about, the Chinese yeah. one. Chata. Yeah, I don't think she's Chinese. I think she might be Hawaiian, Korean, maybe. Or Hawaiian. Her dance is beautiful. Oh, you know, just make me sound racist. Offended so many people. Oh, God. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I loved, I loved the gym teacher, the really religious gym teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's the woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I doubt your commitment to. <laughs> oh God, what's the, oh, the dance? Oh, I, I wrote that down. I wrote that down because it was a brilliant, I brilliant really doubt line. Your commitment to- Sparkle motion. Sparkle motion. <laughs> Sometimes great. I doubt your commitment to sparkle motion. <laughs> I love Patrick Swayze's yeah. character and his videos, he's his self help videos. Are, yeah, are just... he's a wrong. He he wears that suit in uh, Roadhouse as well, I think. Does he? Yeah, it, just, it doesn't work in the suit. Roadhouse. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, the, the... so I don't know why I don't really like it because I thought the characters were great. I, th- I, th- I think I just found the plot a bit. Slow and grinding. Really. It is, I mean, it is, but I quite like that about it. So, the, and and I think that I had completely forgotten that, you know, Frank. The the point. So this rabbit pops up for anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, the rabbit appears and starts talking to him and telling him to do things, and he it gives him sort of ideas about. So Swat, Pat, Patrick Swayze's character is this self help guru. Who the very religious gym teacher mm-hmm. is basically idolizes. idolizes, and she's like a groupie almost. Yeah, but and his his life thing is basically fear. It's yeah. all fear. Everything fear and bed, love. Just stop fearing, man. Yeah, and Go. Donnie Darko, Jake Gyllenhaal's character, is effectively a, a genius child. Yeah, who doesn't really have to try, and is just on it. And he basically picks this guy's arguments apart. Um, and gets thrown out of school and all this kind of stuff. And then Frank turns up and tells him to burn his house down. Or well, he directs him down a street. He picks yeah. up a wallet and finds out, oh my God, this is Patrick Swayze's character's house. And then you just hear Frank kind of going, now you know where he lives. Yeah, yeah. Burn it down. Yeah. And that's <laughs> the thing when you said about Donnie's mental problem. So he had, she, he'd burnt some houses down. He had yeah. trashed some houses. Yeah. Because he's just an angry boy. And why is he angry? It sets it up right at the beginning of the film. It takes no time at all where he's pushed by him back into town. And you've got the sprinklers, the, 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 the leaf blower. And you just can see it's all hypocrisy, yeah. bullshit. We're going to smash all this shit and down. And you can imagine that transporting today. Yeah. to today and that whole kind of everybody's um, disaffected and everybody's disconnected and it's that kind of what are we chasing why are we doing it Watching why are we self-help running videos. through these processes and living in a world set by people who don't seem to know what they're talking about and it doesn't resonate and chime with him so he's kind of fighting against that but yeah. the bit when so this rabbit mm. throughout it keeps coming in and then they go to the cinema to watch Poltergeist? no they're watching no. The Evil Dead Evil Dead that was it um, and Frank appears and takes his head off and you realise that he's got an eye missing and Donnie Dark is looking at him and they're kind of joking and laughing and he goes out at that point to burn Swayze's house down. Yeah. But then the bit, the bit at the end when the firebird, the Pontiac firebird comes in and runs over Donnie Darko's girlfriend and Frank, the guy, gets out of the pond and I was there going, holy shit. Yeah. I, I completely forgot this happened. Yeah. And then... Donnie kills him, shoots him in the eye. Yep. And it's just like, whoa. It's a Christmas carol. <laughs> <laughs> no? It's, okay, I maybe just, not. It was, yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's a great film. It is good, it is good. And that, 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 the whole science bit is like, they obviously, that's where they take loads of liberties. Like Miss Sparrow, she wrote this book, oh, yeah, she was yeah, into that's science. So and he gets that book and he starts understanding, okay, what the hell is going on? And essentially time is, is, is split for him. And uh, he's kind of in another parallel universe, really, where he probably should have died. But I suppose that, that, that way to wrap it up and the point of it is, I, I, don't, I don't quite get it. You know, he's, he's, he's touching people and changing things and burning down hypocrisies, whatever. But then when he does die, 
he didn't do any of that. Yeah. So, but it, it has still affected them. You know, Chat Up is still changed. The girl that you fall in love with still remembers him. Um, I think but the whole Patrick Swayze and child porn thing yeah. is still going on. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He didn't get caught for that yeah. in this new altered reality. Yeah, and I think I probably made a really fatal error because at the end of the film you get this 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 song that I cannot oh, abide. You know, oh, I like oh, it. Some... The R.E.M. song. No, no it's not R.E.M. It's, uh, it Tears not? for Fears. It's not Tears for Fears. Heart of Millions. Is that Tears for Fears? Sung up places. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just the way he sings it. And maybe I wouldn't mind the song, but when it came out, it was quite a big hit in the yeah. UK. And yeah. you got this dopey looking cunt wearing this stupid hat because he's <laughs> fucking bald. And I've got nothing against baldness, but I just, oh, the way he sings it. Just for our listeners, brings we my put out that none of us are bald on the <laughs> Yeah, none of us are bald. So sorry about that. But yeah, massive love for bald people. Um, but yeah, I didn't get through literally to the last 30 seconds. So they could actually have been like a thing where I realised, oh, that was the point of this sort of, you know, splitting of time. So you didn't watch the end? Thing. The last sort of 30 seconds. As that song yeah, plays. As just the, as in, yeah, the end. <laughs> yeah, there's a little <laughs> montage right at the end. Yeah, so you didn't watch the bit, end of the film. It's a bit fundamental, really, that. Well, yeah. <laughs> Shit. I did that with Martin, with the Avengers. I went to the Avengers the other day. Um, I got Infinity so, War. I got so bored when a certain character got killed off. As spoilers, uh, <laughs> I uh, I decided to just leave. It was only about five minutes towards the end. See, that's brave. Doing that at a cinema, I would never do that at a cinema. Oh yeah, and there was no one was sticking around for the end of credit scenes. Right, what do we think of the effects? I thought they were pretty shonky. They're, and I'm talking yeah, about that. Yeah, the, 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 the guide thing. The that comes oh, no, the water. It's like a bit. No, no, it was I, like I, the I, thing out of a bit, but Yeah, not yeah, very much so. But no, I love the water. So the fate, essentially, fate and all that stuff. It's, it's very trippy, you know, yeah, if you've yeah. ever explored in fields at certain times of the year. This stuff is stuff you can recognise and connect with. So you've got that fate element. I loved it. I thought it was cool. Mm. Okay. The, um, the, the Einstein Rosen Bridge bit at the end of the, the jet engine goes through was a bit quantum leap yeah yeah but that I think right. but at the uh, do, end do you know though, what they didn't they didn't jar with me they didn't take me out of it they, I didn't look at them and kind of go oh. I was happy to go with them I didn't I didn't really feel anything by the end of this film Did I didn't not? feel like ah oh, wow really enjoyed that or yeah I just I felt like oh, I've done that now when, it's you know right. it's, a, it's a really good ride the performances are really really yeah, great yeah. Um, it made me want to read that short story the Destructors, was it? Oh, Graham Greene. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you know, must be something. Graham. Cool. Graham. All right, yeah. Graham. Graham. Now that's how the Americans say it. Graham. Graham, Graham Greene. Yeah, we should get some <laughs> Graham Greene on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what about standout moments? I mean, um, I love the rabbit. The image of Frank. Yeah. I really like it. It's proper it creepy. Yeah, But really not is. in a in a horror way. So it's creepy, but not... Mm. Yeah, you you think I, I don't feel any malevolence from yeah, but it's even though he looks very like it should be, image and yeah, it looked yeah. great. Mm. Yeah, there's a, again like when I said it's a wonderful life. There's elements that remind me about this film. There's another Jimmy Stewart film called um, Harvey, where you've got a six yes. foot tall rabbit, yeah, invisible rabbit, that yeah. we can't see, and so that's maybe tenuously linked. In to that. in in the because I've never seen the film Harvey. Mm. Can you can we see the rabbit? No, at all. Uh, the, mm, yes, there is. I think there is one scene where okay. we see the rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I quite like. There's there's a scene where um, they all go off on their bikes to see what's her name Sparrow. Yeah. Uh, at the party, so they throw parents are out of town. Uh, they're yeah. throwing a party, and then he says it's in the basement or something. Yeah, like that, the Donnie back door kind of freaks out and kind of he knows he has to go to the Sparrow who wrote the book and all that kind of stuff. And they all kind of charge off. Four of them charge off on their bikes. It put yes. reminded the Goonies. Yeah, yeah. Well, and people, people used to push bike. Well, they still do. The kids kind of do, but they don't push like. They're, push they bike all, like they're all on mopeds now, nicking watches and stuff. Aren't yeah, they? yeah. And, the, and there was also um, Segway. bearing in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not seen them on the segways? <laughs> Can I go pretty fast on the segway? Well, not. Uh, but bearing in mind, I came to this after watching Salem's Lot. Yeah. Uh, she at the beginning of the film when Donnie Darko comes back from waking up on the street with his drop handlebar bike. Yeah, and he comes home. His mum is reading it. Stephen uh, King's it. 
And then uh, yes, Frank yes. and the rabbit are in a firebird with a clown. I right, no, so that's linked the, together. That's the other thing we should mention, really. It's set in the 80s, isn't it? No. Is it not? Yeah, it is. I is think it? it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's set in the 80s. Yeah, it's yeah, set yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yes. It is. I think it's 87. But, but it's quite subtly set in the 80s, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, it doesn't They haven't gone for the cliches yeah. of... Yeah, yeah. Except, you know, that... It was, yeah, I think when it got to the it bit, it was like, oh, yeah, this is the 80s. Yeah. Well, they're watching Evil Dead at the cinema. Yeah. 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 All right, then. Have we talked enough about that? I think so. I, do, I have... This I, for this film, I have the fewest number of notes of any of the films we've watched. Yeah, because so that was no, that's quite it's a real positive thing because it, oh. bits of it didn't jar. Well, you yeah, you don't didn't take me out of films it. we watched. Yeah, right, and, and, right. So what I wanted to ask you, um, can we see any links between without the obvious because obviously coming of age, even though it's Salem's Lot wasn't coming of age, any links between Donnie Darko, Salem's Lot? Oh, there's got to be some, isn't there? There's got to be some. Oh, I suppose the, you've got the characters. You've got realised characters. You've got characters. You've got, characters. You've got, you've got a story. We've got a plot. <laughs> I don't uh, think so. I think no, they're I don't very think so. different. Yeah, yeah, they? they are very, very different. Yeah. Yeah. Right. One, one's an outright monster movie. Yeah. And the other is not. It's a, yeah. it's a psychological... Yeah. Yeah. I suppose I just want to sort of summarise. I think it is it's really, really good, but you get sort of... Uh, two thirds through the film, and it goes a little bit more into Sparrow's chaos theory science bit, and it's a little bit like, ah, what, what, what are we getting at here? And then it's it's a, it's a nice wrap up at the end. But it, it, it's a good film. Sparrow reminded me a little bit of David Bowie from Legend. She had his hair. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And there's a bit when um, uh, in Patrick Swayze's house, when Donny Darker goes in to burn it down, he's throwing. Uh, pet gasoline, I guess the Americans would say, uh, around the house. There's a portrait of him that makes him look awful. makes him look like a love child between Sylvester Stallone and Brian May. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very bad hand that painted that. <laughs> yeah. Bless right. him. Let's score it then. Okay, so we've got our score charts. Yep. We All right. Do. So I need to pen away though. Performances. I've given it an eight. Yeah. Nine. Agree. I've got nine. All right. Effects four. Seven. 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 Well, yeah, the, the, I didn't like it. I really didn't like that the, effect. The knife and his tapping, trying to tap yeah. through to Frank. Ding, 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 yeah, it was well. good. And his eye pulses when he does that as well, doesn't it? Oh, that'd be the eye thing you're talking about. Huh? When he's going dink, dink with the knife. Yeah. One of Frank's eyes is going boom, boom, boom. It's pulsing as well. That goes yellow, doesn't it? I imagine the eye thing is a reference what to... What the ball rape? So, well... <laughs> right anyway come on let's no go. no the eye that I'm talking about it just literally just cuts yeah, in so I it doesn't imply that it's, it's alright awesome. plot I've given it five eight seven rewatch factor four seven I'd say a six direction six nine seven there's a I think this may have been one of the the first films where you kind of go into a music video yeah you there's yeah. There, there's obviously the music in this film is very important yeah. but you basically get the whole characters introduced to you when Jude Barrymore first turns yes. up it's basically yeah. you're in a music yeah, video yeah, yeah, yeah. and you get her character and it's come up fast forward and yeah. 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 no slow, slow oh, no, not her oh yeah slow-mo yeah, yeah it's also no, it's nice and slow-mo with this, a, a cool track playing I can't remember what the track is actually cinematography seven uh nine Seven. Sound of music, seven. Nine. Six. And I'm putting it down simply <laughs> yeah. because that fucking <laughs> familiar yeah. face is. Originality, eight. I went nine. I'm giving it an eight. Enjoyability, six. I went eight. I'm giving it seven. It's pretty good. Well, it's, it's a bit wise ass. It's definitely, it's, it, it's, it's aware of itself. Yeah. Seven, seven, I, seven, I, seven. I think you've hit the nail on the head there about being aware of itself. Uh, live change, eight, six. I went five. I'm going to go for... Wait a minute, you don't score anything I on life-changing. No. So why are you... What, give, talk, talk about your five. Because it was... For me, it was... It's not that it put me on a different path or anything like that, but when I first saw it, and then when I saw it again, I just think the originality of it... Yeah. ...is something that I, I haven't seen in those other films that we've talked about, because... I'm a lot older, I guess, and I'm kind of reflecting, oh, no, no, it's drawn from this, it's drawn from that. But also, just that, the imagery of it, and the, that Frank, the rabbit, is just this, not overbearing is the wrong word, but this kind of ever-present, it's amazing imagery. Cool. All right, so I, I give it 61 altogether. 
Okay. I have scored it 80. Okay. 68. Okay, giving a grand total of 209. And a movie lighthouse score of 69.6. Wait a minute, is that higher than... That's higher than Salem's Lot? Yep. No! Yeah. Okay. I think... Wait, wait, wait. No. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You can't change it. That's it. No. All right, it's pretty close, though. It's only 0. 0.4 away from... Oh, oh no, no, 1.4. Anyway, that's a pretty... Let's put it right up there. Excellent. No, right. it's not. <laughs> Damn it. All right, well, listen, we've, we've been talking forever... Yeah. And we want to do the solo review at the end as well. Okay. So, yeah. whose choice is it to rubbish through my ball bag? Apparently I can go in it. Oh, she don't. Well, that will do. <laughs> okay, I've lost the ball. Oh, there it is. With the, just, it's but, just behind that, like, uh, scale. Yeah, in, the, in the lighthouse. We are actually in the lighthouse, by the way. How did it's, you bring this? Okay. There we go. Dig deep, my dig friend. Dig deep, dig deep, dig deep. We got ourselves up. a slice of 38. That's 38. Okay. <laughs> 38 is Invasion. Yay! <laughs> so, Invasion movies. Fantastic. Right, okay, so we'll be back in a second with our choices. Alright, and we're back. So, we've got our choices. Um, Be, come on now, guys. Come on. <sighs> we're, I hope we both are really traditional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I know that if I heard a film called Possession, I'd be choosing it. Right. Stop. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> right, my first choice is um, Invaders from Mars, which is a classic old sci-fi movie, which I absolutely love. 50s, right? Yeah, I think so. Invaders from Mars. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Interesting. And it's set. You get two, right? Let me just say, yep. it's set in a farm with a little boy called Jimmy. Yeah, all right. And I grew up on a farm, and my name's James. <laughs> and when and I watched it when I was about five years old. And when you look out the kitchen window, does it go up like a little path? Oh. Goes over a hill? Yeah, it does. With a couple of trees. At the so top. there we go. That's my first one, Wim. All right, my first one is Starship Troopers. <gasps> Ooh. <sighs> I don't think I need to say anything. Nice more. choice, yeah. Right, my second choice is 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is the sequel, yeah. well, kind of a sequel, and, um, it's an indirect sequel to Cloverfield. Um, so, and that's a little tense invasion. Biggie Boy Goodman. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And my second choice mm -hmm. is the horror comedy Critters. <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Windy Bar! We are doing well this month! <laughs> Excellent. Oh, are you, you going to get grumpy with me? No, 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 no. It's got to be Starship Troopers and Critters. You are joking. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> you really want... You want no, that's want all right. No, I, I love those two movies. So that's, that's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Let's go that. for those two. All right. Oh. No, no, no. I think we decided. All Damn right. it. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Um, I'm very excited about next month. It's going to be a good one. Starship Troopers and Critters, you... <laughs> 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 right, I've been James. I've been Laurie. I've been Wyndham. And we'll see you soon. Bye. All right, so this is our little bonus feature. Um, we're going to talk about um, Solo, but we're going to do a spoiler review of it. Um... I've been seeing it, and Laurie, you've seen it, haven't you? Yes, All definitely. Right. Yeah. So, first thoughts, what do you think? Uh, okay, so it opens up, and you have, uh, in a galaxy far, far away, dot, 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 dot. Um, and I wasn't expecting that. I thought these little standalone sort of episodes would just sort of bang into it, like it did with Rogue One. So that interested me. But then you've got this opening scene where... Did you like it? Did I like it? I, I loved it. Yeah, I really, really did love it. You see, great. I enjoyed it. I yeah. thought it was all right. I've really got Star Wars fatigue. Absolutely, I understand that. D have you got Star Wars fatigue? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. 
<laughs> to any degree. But you're absolutely right. I mean, this, this, this famously hasn't done well at the box office. A lot of people are having this fatigue stuff. It probably came out way too quick. Was yeah, why didn't they just after? put it out at Christmas or something? Because, I suppose from my perspective, and probably Disney's perspective, there's probably no need. If they've got it in the can, we can do it. Um, but also, you know, The Last Jedi, so many people are angry with that, and I can really, really see why. There's some choices in there that probably yeah not very well done, this, that, the other. And this could have been brought out to just cover it up a bit, just take the edge off a bit. Um, but yeah, there we are. It, it, it was the most expensive Star Wars film ever made, simply because it was actually tailored to be one of the, one of the cheapest. But because they got pretty much the whole way through it, and they chopped the two directors and moved it to Ron Howard, yeah, they've effectively paid for the film twice because he had to re completely remake the film. Do you think that was a mistake? Because I'd have really, I think after watching it, and I did enjoy it. Mm. I think after watching it, and I think I would have preferred to have seen what they'd have made of the film themselves without really? Ron Howard. Really? Ron Howard's a good director, but he's a very safe director. And yeah. I wonder if it had been a little bit more out there, it had felt a little bit more fresh and original. Because original. it felt yeah. like a really good... It, it was a good story, good yeah. characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went through it, but there wasn't very much else to it. I think, well, so the, the reason why the other two guys got pulled out was because <clears throat> what they were doing, apparently, on set, they were, they were turning it into a full-on comedy, like a full-on slapstick, you know, loads of improvisation that was being encouraged. Yeah, there was a bit in it where Amelia Clark, is it Amelia Clark? Yeah, yeah well, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. That you can see they're doing a bit of impro almost. And right. They kinda, I can't remember what the joke was, but there's something and they go, oh, yeah. You, you, you know, and you know that that was just an impro, and I think that would have really annoyed me if it, there had been a lot of that. There, I didn't like there it was, at all. There was tons of it. You can hear a lot of impro in the uh, L3, the oh, robot. Really didn't like the robot. Yeah, that didn't work for a lot of people, actually. Did I, you I, like it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did. I liked her. Even when she's bending down, it's like, don't look at me, don't look at me. A lot of people, that wouldn't work for them, but I really liked it. Full on feminist. Uh, robot that's very funny and, and is in kind of in love with Lando. So let's talk about the characters. Uh, let's go with Lando since you landed on him. What do you think? Absolutely spot on. Yeah, I like so Lando. So Mr. Glover nails it. And there's loads of uh, sort of backstory and comics and books that have been ri- written about what Lando got up to. I think the Lando Chronicles or something it's yeah. called. But he's really got that in this film. So if you're a geek, if you're a fan... He delivers on so many different levels. He's, he's, he's talking about stories and things that he's done. And just all his like, nuances really linked to Billy D. Williams, who played the original. Yeah. But he's playing it probably in a little bit more of a cheeky, campy, maybe a little bit more highlighted. That he's a bit you know, in love with himself, all his capes. and He's, he's just awesome. I right, I'm it. jumping around a bit, but I don't yeah. know if it was where I saw it. But the first ten minutes... Yeah. I could hardly see a thing on the screen. It is very dark. It is very dark, all that bit. And there's kind of a lot of tunnel running, isn't there? This and the other. But even with the creature from the water... Really dark, yeah. You yeah, can yeah. hardly make her out. Yeah, which is it's great. I loved it. Do a you lot, think... A lot of, some people didn't like that either. This I think kind of, I could have managed... Awesome. I could have coped with that if it had been more of a silhouette. Yeah. So you couldn't see... You know, but it, I just thought that there was something wrong with the, the screen. There could have been. Maybe if it was extra dark. I could see it. I could see what was going on. But I loved that bit when when she turned up. It's like proper. Well, I, I liked know. that bit, but I think if I, I, right, I did have a problem with the story. I loved the way they introduced Chewie. Yeah, I love that's great. I love Woody Harrelson. Yeah, uh, I thought the guy who played Han Solo was very good. He is good. Yeah, he's really good. And they all got oh, we up to have acting lessons. So come on, tell what? me, tell me then. Yeah, because we, I don't want to talk about this for too long. Okay, but tell me what was the problem with it then. What do you mean? What's the problem? With right, it? try I and see. No try problem. and not try and see it not through your blinded faith, <laughs> and see what was wrong with it. Because there was something wrong with it. I think. Well, just, I think just like the marketing of it, which is sort of it, it no. In terms of the film, you think that was a perfect film? Oh right, okay. You want me to sort of pull some stuff out? Well, that... there's no point me say, you, you just saying it's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's brilliant, because it wasn't brilliant. <laughs> uh, for, for as a as a Star Wars boy. I loved it I, because it's got so much uh, stuff in it that's connected that's to... That's not what I asked you though, was it? Oh, for goodness sakes. 
What what could I say that maybe could be changed about it? Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. But I thought Amelia Clark wasn't very good. Well, yeah, you said... I think she she puts in a good turn. I think she's all right. You see, I don't think we can have a discussion about it because I think you just like anything as long as you have <laughs> Star Wars on it. Did uh, you like the Star Wars Christmas special? No. Right, OK. So we're getting holiday we're special. There we're there somewhere. So we've yeah. got a standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you like the bits when the droids all have a droid revolt? Where L3 sets off like a, a droid revolution? Y- yes. Again, did, did you like the castle run the way they realised that? I think by the point it got to the castle run, yeah. I was a little bit bored. Oh, okay. And right. I thought that was just moving so quickly, I couldn't really keep up with it, really. Right. You know, Paul Bettany, did he surprise you with his malevolence? He's great. Did he put you right. on edge? I, I think I'm the only one that, because everyone, I've heard a few podcasts talking about this, and I didn't really like the Paul Bettany bits. Oh, I love the Paul Bettany. And I really thought it was stupid when <gasps> Darth Maul turned up at the end. That's not stupid, see? Because I've, I've gone deep. I know what that character's up to and he would be around that time and she's linked to Crimson Dawn and that's what um, Darth Maul is up to at This that is time. where you let yourself down, I think. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a shit. But if there was one thing, actually at the time I thought, oh, no, that's okay. But the Solo, how he got his name Solo, okay, fair enough. Fair enough, that's a bit <laughs> pants. All right? Um... The dice, they probably overdid the dice. They didn't need to do so much of the dice. Um, well, it's become a big thing now, hasn't it? I didn't even yeah, know he had like, those dice. Were they in the first three? They just hang for the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. There's no big deal, but they're making such a massive deal. Yeah. And you've seen in The Last Jedi, he, basically that he, Luke takes that back to Leia and it means to really Well, he fight. doesn't. He Well, he doesn't, you're he, right. How does he do that? You see, that was that's another problem with that with that other breakfast. film. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. I'm going to, he, but no, they vanish. Imagine object. Yeah, I know they vanish. So what? He can he can imagine anything. I suppose. See, so. like David Copperfield, and then some. Oh Jesus! And All right, some. I I didn't dislike the film. Good, but I think I've had enough. You're, yeah, you probably have, and that's fine. You relax. You go and do other stuff, and I'll just keep my eye on this gig. Do you think? So do you think I'm it's going to continue? It. I think we probably will They're have three. They're booked for three films. I think we will have But three. I don't think the next film will be a Han Solo film. It'll probably be the Boba Fett film, and they'll be in it. Yeah. See, again, this is the thing. I mean, a lot of people are saying, you know, let's see new stuff. Everything seems to be about the past. You're always going back. And even to, to, to a degree, the whole Force Awakens last year, it's all about the past. Whereas now, I kind of break free. Let's, let's get some really new stuff in this world. But in fairness, yeah. the trilogy that's going on at the moment... Yeah. It's part of the nine part trilogy, so it has to link to the past. Yeah. Well they've already got in production the next set of three films. Right, yeah. Which there's yeah. rumour it's gonna be the Knights of the Old Republic. Did oh, you know that? I didn't know that. How does that make you feel? Uh not not particularly mm, whatevs. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't know if I want to I know I know there's apparently there's loads of really cool stuff in there so that they could I'll probably talk about it and I probably will enjoy it. But no, that's not really what I'd want to Remember that by the window's still here, by the way. It's been very quiet. <laughs> but remember film. when if and when that film comes out and if and when it is about the Knights of the Old Republic remember what and I he's said. going on about yeah. how fucking amazing <laughs> <laughs> We will remember remind him of this point. Solo is really, really good. It surprised me a lot. My expectations were low, like I famously said. Were they so low? Yeah. (laughs) Um, But I, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. There's loads of love and attention and little bits and nuggets they dropped. I think that there was attention to detail and lots of references and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, um, they did introduce Chewie very well, I thought. Yeah. Except he is a flesh-eating monster, isn't he? Well, yeah, that's he's it. He's, he's been eating people. loads and loads of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. It gives him that sort of edge. But I don't know what he's been eating since. When he meets <laughs> up with Solo, I mean, what, what are you eating now? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we don't see Chewie much after that, do we? But their, their relationship is, is really great. Chewie's really, really great in it. Um, but all the characters, I think, they're all, you know, all good, strong performances. But I suppose with the exception, maybe, of Amelia Clark. Is it yeah. Amazing? I just wasn't convinced by her. She, except for Game of Thrones, everything else I've seen her in, in her in. She was in the Terminator film, I think. Yes. And a couple of. She just comes across as a bit smug, and it's almost like, okay, I'm 
in Game of Thrones, and I'm just smug. I, I really like Chris Daenerys in Game of Thrones. I think she's perfect. Yeah, she's good. But I didn't like her with this. Just, just a little bit less so, I suppose, really. But um, we might be seeing more of her because you find out, you know, she had to do this horrible stuff. With you definitely Dawn. want to see more of her. She flies off, has to do this thing. But this, this film is the only Star Wars film we actually haven't had any consequence to the larger narrative. Because, I mean... You know, Rogue One was its own little film, but that was massively connected to, you know, the, yeah. the circumstances of the bigger plot. Yeah. Whereas this one genuinely could just have fun and go off and look at stuff that we were aware of. The Kessel Run, okay, what did that look like? Yeah. What was the card game with him and Lando Carizan? How did he really win them? So, Vulcan? just to remind me. Yeah. They did the Kessel Run in how many parsecs? Twelve, but he rounded down, which is great. And twelve and parsecs is a unit of distance, I think. Not time. No. Okay. So he basically, he did it he because he went it. through that hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of L3, that she's got, you know, an un... No, I don't like L3 at the, all. The, 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 the charts, you know, the, ast- the, the astronomical the charts. The quirky droids. Goes into the Millennium Falcon, you know, C-3PO's sp- spoken to the... And Lando's she having fight, a sexual relationship with that droid, isn't he? Well, no, they've, they've got some sort of chemistry that's bubbling. There's a yeah. massive war going on, and this droid dies, and he's, Lando's there going, No! Stupid. It's great. Right. How many, if you had to mark it out of ten, what would you give it? Um, I'm giving it eight and a half. All right. I'd give it a seven. Okay. Yeah, I didn't hate it. It was fine. Watch it again. Good. But after a long, long relax before you... <laughs> You just get really <laughs> sick of it all. All right, I think that'll do, won't it? Yeah. Bite size. We can talk more about it. So I'm sure you can bring Solo's it back. Solo's great. I love the fact that it hasn't really done very well. That makes me happy. I'm um, sure when we do Ghosts or Stanley Kubrick, you can bring it back to Star Wars somehow. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> right. All right, then. Catch you later. Cheers. <laughs>